Hey guys, welcome to the newest episode of Raid 101. I'm Hunter, and today we're going to talk about champion skills. So what are skills? To put it simply, they're the stuff that champions do. Skills are what differentiate one champion from another. Without skills, a champion is just a pretty model and a bunch of statistics. These are what really define how they perform in battle and what special abilities they have, whether it's attacking an enemy, healing themselves or their allies, using buffs and debuffs, and so on. While all skills are different, there are a few different types. Default skills. These are a champion's basic skills. They're always the first skill, sometimes known as skill one, and can be used every turn. You just select the skill, then use it. Active skills. Most other skills are active skills. They work like default skills where you have to manually select them and use them. But they're different in that they have cooldowns, so you can't use the same active skill every turn. We'll dig into cooldowns a bit more in a minute. Passive skills. Passive skills are different from default and active skills because they trigger automatically when certain conditions are met. Some passive skills might have permanent effects that are always active, unless blocked with a debuff, while others may have cooldowns. Aura skills. These are special skills that provide all champions on the team with permanent bonuses in battles when a champion with an aura skill is chosen as the leader. However, these only work in certain situations and are usually limited to specific game areas or champion affinities, like boosting the HP of all allies in dungeons or boosting the attack stats of your team's void champions in the arena. The bonuses are permanent throughout the entirety of the battle and will keep working even if the leader dies. On top of that, there are the rare secret skills. These are somewhere between active and passive skills, meaning that they only become available when certain conditions are met or if they proc, which means they trigger and unlock themselves, but you'll still need to use them manually. You'll see some bosses have these, but there are a few champions with skills that are only available when a certain other champion is in the team. Always be sure to read skill descriptions thoroughly before starting a battle to know how to get the most out of your champions. I mentioned cooldowns a moment ago. Let's talk about that a little more. All active skills and some passive skills become unavailable for a certain number of turns after being used or triggered. This is their cooldown. See here? Athiel's Divine Blade skill has a cooldown of three turns. That means that once we've used the skill once, we need to wait three turns before using it again. When it's Athiel's time to attack again, we can see that Divine Blades are unusable. Its icon is grayed out and it has a number on it. The number shows how many turns Athiel needs to take for that skill to become available again. Since one turn has passed since Athiel used Divine Blades, the cooldown counter went down from three to two. Now that you know about the types of skills, how do you identify a good skill from a bad one? How do you know what a skill does? First, skills can do a bunch of things, so make sure you read the skill description for a breakdown. The simplest thing a skill can do is deal damage or cast a simple heal. Check here. On every skill, the description shows which of the champion's stats affects the skill itself, like deciding how much damage it does or how big its heal is. In most cases, this is a single stat, like attack, defense, or HP, and is usually complementary to the champion's type. You'll notice how a lot of defense champions have skills that scale based on their defense stat. This is called a skills multiplier, and it's most commonly made up of two parts the stat, or stats, that are taken into account, and a value that multiplies the stat to get the output of the skill. That sounds pretty simple, and in a lot of cases it is, but there's also a lot of depth and intricacy with skills. Think of it as a mini formula that can drastically differ from skill to skill, and from champion to champion. There are a lot of things taken into account when balancing champion skills, like whether the attack is single target or AoE, the cooldown of the skill, and which stats it scales off of. In general, active attacking skills have higher multipliers than default skills, while AoE skills have lower multipliers than single target skills. And then with cooldowns, the longer the cooldown, the stronger the skill probably is. That's kind of the point of them having cooldowns, needing to think strategically and only using certain skills when the time is right. But just like in real life, perfecting a skill takes time and knowledge. In the case of Raid, this knowledge comes from special skill tomes. Once you have a skill tome of the right rarity for your champion, you can upgrade their skills immediately at the tavern. You can also do the same thing if you have duplicates of the same champion, like two athletes. 
We'll talk more about it in the upcoming Building Your Own Bastion video dedicated to the tavern, but those are the basic principles of how to upgrade skills. But what about why you should upgrade them? Upgrading a skill will always improve it in some way, from increasing the damage, reducing the cooldown, or increasing the chance of applying a buff or debuff, but not every upgrade works the same. Increasing a skill's chances of casting a buff or debuff is super simple. It just adds the percentage stated in the upgrade to the base chance. If we look at an example, Martyr's Rush skill has a baseline 45% chance of placing a decreased defense debuff. Fully upgraded, the chance increases to 75%. Reducing cooldown is the same story. You take the original cooldown and you subtract the number of turns shown by the upgrade. However, increasing a skill's damage or healing power or strength of a shield is different. Instead of straight up adding to the basic percentage, it's multiplicative, meaning the percentage shown is applied to the base not added on top. Let me show you with an example. Apothecary's Soothing Chant heals by 35% of the target ally's HP by default. Upgrading shows that it gives you another 15% on top. So what does that take you to? 35% plus 15% is 50%. If you just add them together, but that 15% is actually 15% of 35. 15% of 35 is 5.25, so this takes the skill to just over 40% heal. It's not a bad thing, but it's something that you should know when you're calculating your damage or healing potential. We've dedicated a whole video to buffs and debuffs and how they work, but we'll quickly cover what they are again in case you've not seen that episode. Buffs are positive effects a champion places on themselves or their allies. Things like increase attack, defense, or speed. Most buffs have two tiers, with the higher tiers providing bigger bonuses. If you want to know the exact percentage bonus of a buff or debuff, just check the details in the skill description. Debuffs are negative effects that you place on the enemy, or that enemies place on your champions. They are the kind of buffs that work pretty much the same way, but instead of doing good things, they do bad things. Like, instead of increasing stats, they decrease them, or even take a champion out of the fight for a set number of turns. I can't overstate how important these are to gameplay and strategy. A well-timed buff or debuff can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Check out our video on buffs, debuffs, accuracy, and resistance to get a deeper breakdown on how they all work and how to use them. So, I think that's everything. But here are some final thoughts. Be sure to learn what your champions can do and build teams of champions whose skills complement and synergize well with each other. That's the difference between a winning and a losing player. And on our side, we'll continue rolling out these videos to help you guys learn the finer details of gameplay. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. See you in the next episode.